Hey y'all, welcome back to Ark Survival Evolved Mobile. I'm Funsize, your host. And uh, we've just respawned here in one of our three bed locations. As you can see, this is a perfect demonstration of what happens when you are respawning. You go inside one of the forges, and this is really easy to get out of. So I'll show you. But first, you'll notice all three of our beds are still up. I've been amazed the last couple of days I've been logging on, and there's literally nothing missing. Tames that I've been leaving on wander, beds, smithies, nobody's touching anything. And it's kind of amazing because the server is so highly populated. In fact, I'm going to take this opportunity just to disable global chat. I always forget to do that. I do that because this is really a PG channel. Uh, I want this to be open to all audiences, and I just want it to be clean. So that's what I'm going to do. So I turn off chat because in easy servers on official, it gets kind of toxic on here. People jump on and make random comments that are just tasteless. So I'm kind of heading that off the pass. Anyway, so we have these three beds going, some tools. I was on earlier grinding some stuff, and I came across a Sabertooth 28, so I tamed that. Um, to get out of this bed, you just jump and look around, try to move forward, and eventually you go out through the roof. Or normally you would. I guess there's a first time for everything. There we go. You just jump out the roof. Done. Alright, we got some Allosaurus down here. That could be problematic. Let me quickly check my tribe log. See if I've lost anything overnight. Nope. Yep, that's from when I was on here earlier, actually. So no, I've not lost anything. I've died a bunch of times, but that's all intentional. Looks like those Dimorphodons are going to chew those Allosaurus up, so I should be fine. So, just want to take this moment before we really get into the meat of the episode to say to Hund and to Becca, you know who you are, happy birthday. I would sing the song, but apparently there's uh, actually copyright issues with that, so I can't actually sing it on my channel. But, happy birthday to you two. You know who you are. Hopefully you're both watching this. If not, I'm talking to nobody. Alright, with that said, let's get on with the episode. So what we're going to be doing is, pretty much right away, we're going to be handing this off to our guest star. I know y'all have been waiting for two whole episodes for this guy to come along, but he's going to be our guest star, and he's going to help us with all the taming, and he should be coming back recurring throughout the episodes, um, and hopefully we have a good time with him. His name is Krunk, and uh, he will be taking care of our taming for us. So... I uh, I actually picked him up kind of just down at the voice actors guild and he was just a guy who needed a job but he said he was a squirrel scout apparently I don't know what that is but hopefully he knows tames and stuff like that and he also said that if I was gonna have him in my video I had to put his resume up here so we're gonna play that next hopefully it fits the PG mold we'll see and uh, all right let's let's just play that Okay, all right, um, yeah, I, I don't know what I expected, that that, that wasn't it. All right, so I, I guess that was PG, so that's fine. We'll just, uh, we'll just hand this over to Krunk and uh, let, let him take it from here. Welcome back. So, I was on my way to find a dodicorous fun size, but I stumbled upon this in the meantime. Yes, we have it. The great, the mighty Argentavis. Now, I've been stalking this for about 15 hours now, so... I'm beginning to grow hungry, but if I can just get it a little bit closer before it sneaks away, I might have a chance of neutralizing it. You have to be careful with these Argentavis. They're tricky. As you can see, it's almost, almost there. It's huge. It's just huge. And well, it appears to be a small, flightless Argentavis, perhaps a baby. I guess this means it's useless to us. Well, as responsible Squirrel Scouts, we're going to do what every Squirrel Scout should do when they find something cute, small, and helpless in the wild. 
kill it with a stick. Alright, let's go find us that Dodicorus. Alright, so we've got ourselves a Dodicorus here. It's a level 9, and that's just fine. And, uh, it looks like it's white, so... I'm gonna take advantage of this right here. We just need this for fun size. He's gonna bust up some rocks, maybe make some more beds after this, so we've gotta get this for him. And I gotta get my paycheck, so... We're gonna hide behind the tree because the Dodicorus is a very fierce carnivore, as you know. Just check its health first. Yes, its health is good. So, we're gonna aim for headshots here. Avoid the shell, naturally. This is a rather simple process. You just walk backward, shoot at its head, and get eaten by an Alasaurus. That's it. Come to Papa. He's bound to go down eventually. Now, in case any of you were wondering, yes, I was using normal arrows. Good call, you caught it. That was definitely a test. So we're going to go find another Dodicorus, and we're going to use tranquilizer arrows on it. All right, I'll see you in a bit. All right, so we've got ourselves another Dodicorus. This one should be fine, though he is a little injured. Now, I've made sure to put the Trank arrows in. Good spot on the last one, guys. And we're going to see if we can aggro him out of the snow. So, here goes nothing. It'll probably tear us to pieces. Come at me. We do have a trap down the hill, if necessary. And daddy. Now, as I mentioned, Dodicorus is a carnivore, so we're going to throw some meat on him and wait for his hunger to go down. Oh yeah, this is going to go well. <coughs> it's bound to get hungry eventually. It's only a matter of time before it's tricks. Can't hold out any longer. Alright, so this Dodicorus is obviously broken, so I'm gonna have to put some berries in it to see if that works. You never can tell these days. Your games just don't work sometimes. Imagine that, a Dodicorus eating berries. And there we go. If that isn't absurd, I don't know what is. Well, that tamed out okay. Level 28. Got decent stats. Ah, decent ish. How did it get that movement speed? That's bizarre. Alright, well, hope you enjoyed this short session of Taming with Crook. I'm always available, just contact my agent, I do bookings, and hopefully Fun Size appreciates what I did for him today. So, finishing touch, I'm just gonna throw this on neutral. And I'm going to tell it to stop following me. And I'm going to tell it to wander. That way, by the time Fun Size gets back, it'll be full of stone for him. Alright, I'll see you guys next time. Assuming Fun Size needs my help again. I don't know, with that Dodicorus, he might be set forever.
Hey guys, fun size again. Hope you learned something from Crunk. I know I certainly did. I'm starting to have doubts about that whole season booking I just paid for. Anyway, we're going to move on with the episode. We're going to use this amazing Dodicarus he got here, and hopefully it'll harvest up the stone we need. Um, we're going to put in, hopefully, a bunch more beds. So I'm just going to let this guy work. I'm going to up his melee a bit. I don't understand how his movement speed got that high. Um, maybe I'm missing something. It's been a little while since I've seen a Dodicarus, but I, that seems really high to me. So for now, I'm just going to pump melee damage and... Let this guy go to town. Oh, yes, yeah, a cute guy. I wish I could name him, but I'm just going to leave him vanilla. So, the tames we now have, just to keep you all up to date, we have the Argentavis I tamed uh, in the interim, have a Sabretooth I tamed just this morning when I was out gathering thatch. It was a level 28. I couldn't pass it up. And then we have the Adeodicarus that Crunk got for us. So, they've been doing really well. The Argentavis is just gaining levels like crazy. I don't know how it's surviving so well, but it's doing great. I, I keep running into it. It's funny, I'll be on the other side of the volcano, I'll, I'll bump into it. And, um, I'm, a, I'm a little worried about how far it's wandering, because there are turrets around and it's, it's going to get killed by them eventually. But I have the implant, speaking of which I should grab the dote in, implant, so I can revive it if need be. If I'm not pronouncing Dodicris correctly, let me know. This is just how I've always pronounced it in my head, and so this is how I say it. But eat something. So next thing we're going to do while this guy gathers up is I'm going to go get the Argentavis. See if I can find it on foot. If I can't, I'm going to summon it to me. I'm going to just call it. And we're going to use the Tannery. Now for all you uh, PC and console users, the Tannery is a mobile exclusive item. It's purchasable using Ancient Amber, which is the mobile currency on Ark. And Basically, Ancient Amber is something you can either buy with real-world money, or you can get it from ads, or there are a couple of in-game sources. Um, you'll occasionally find just big glowing amber nodes just sitting on the ground you can pick up, and I, I don't know if it's the fact that it's an easy server, guys, but I've gotten easily five amber nodes since I started, and I'm not searching. I'm not looking for them at all. They're just there. So, I'm pretty pumped about that. It's really working out well. Um, so what I'm going to do is use some of the amber I've gotten, I've been using some of the amber on Soothing Balms. I'll give you all a rundown of that right now. Soothing Balms are over in the store here. So this is the mobile store, for those who don't know. Um, all kinds of cool stuff in here. We'll go into it bit by bit as time goes on. But Soothing Balm is the first thing you need to know. You can get this from quests. You can get this from completing caves. So you don't really need to buy it often, except when you're just starting out and you don't have the access to the caves right away. This, as it says, does a 10 times taming boost. This basically means that on mobile, you can tame anything relatively easily compared to PC. Um, add to that the fact that mobile has a 1.75 times tame boost already worldwide, uh, and you've got a really quick tame on a lot of different things. So that's Soothing Balm. We're going to be using that a lot. Most of it we will not be buying in the store, however. Well, the thing I like about this game is, yes, you can pay money, and yes, there is a way for the ARC developers to have that cash flow, which they need. Obviously, this is a free game on the App Store, they're making all their money through in-app purchases. I like that. That's that's great. Um, but the majority of the stuff that, that they have in here, you can get elsewhere. Or you can make do without. Like the archetypes, for example. I'll go into those right now. These are all... These are strict pay-to-use items. But each of them have alternatives. And each of them have their weaknesses. You know, the crowbar. It's great for prying things out of rocks. Amber. You can use it to use it on amber. You can use it on, um, apparently boxes and such like that to pop them open. Never done that, but it's nice. It's not necessary. If you get an Ascendant pick, you can get pretty much just as much Amber. You just have to put in a tiny bit more time. You know, so it's not necessary. It's not game-breaking. Um, frog feet. They're like flippers, except you can jump. And they break way faster. You know, it's, it's, it's good. It's great, but it's not... You don't have to have it. You don't have to pay money to win this. Iron Skillet, it's great for PvP situations. It knocks things out. But it takes three knocks to knock people out. There's a lot of misconceptions on this and I talked to one of the war drum devs and she was telling me that it's a percentage based thing. Oh, I get out of here. Hello Rexy. She was telling me it's a percentage based thing not a damage based thing. So rather than your typical club which deals torpor based upon your melee, the firing pan deals torpor based upon um, a percentage. So 
when it hits a Pteranodon, for example, it always deals 100% of that creature's torpor, which means they're going to be unconscious right away. Um, and it hits a person, it does 33%. Now, this is the info I got right after Frying Pan came out. Maybe it's changed since then. If y'all have other info, if you've actually tested, I don't want hearsay, but if you've actually tested and found that, oh, my Frying Pan does it in one shot because I boosted melee, let me know. I'd love to be wrong. But from what I've seen, it's just, it's just percentage-based. It doesn't matter how much melee, I could wipe 500% melee. And I'm not going to knock someone out any, any faster with it. That's just my experience. So Frying Pan's great. They also have the Eerie Pistol, which is a pistol that never runs out of ammo, but when it breaks, it breaks. Can't repair it. Um, that's a good one, but again, it only does simple pistol damage. So you're limited by that. Cantilever Platforms. Okay, those are great. Those are cliff platforms, but for mobile. They are treated as a stone structure, so rockets can blast them pretty quickly. But, you know, they're useful. They're useful. And Aerial Symbiote's basically like a an Archaeopteryx that you can wear. There we go. Bye, Mr. Rex. Sorry about that, guys. Alright, let's pop back into the store. So, yeah, your Eerie Pistol, Cantilever, Aerial symbi Symbiote, Mammoth Side Saddle, that's just been released. I don't know a lot about it. Um, it's primitive, so it's got a set amount of armor, but you can build on it. And with Mammoth's new uh, TLC, where they can shoot water and act as an EMP and all that, that's going to be interesting to see how that works out in the meta. And Cutlass, which is basically just uh, an overpowered sword, but it breaks really quickly. So those are the archetypes. Uh, oh, there's also Eerie Turret. An Eerie Turret is like a normal turret, except it never runs out of ammo. It also has less range and does a little bit less damage. To me, the loss of damage and range makes it somewhat pathetic. It's, it's, I would never trust the security of my base to Eerie Turrets. Eerie Turrets are nice as a quick stand-in when you don't have the time to make bullets, but other than that, if you have Eerie Turrets in your defenses, replace them. Maybe have one on each tower if you're worried about draining, but really they do very little damage if you had Ascendant Chitin gear, you could run the things. A whole set of them. So, Eerie Turrets, again, I wouldn't think are pay to win just because of that. So those are archetypes. Other than that, everything in the store is bought with Amber, as far as I'm aware. Um, but what we're going to focus on right now, and it took me a little while to get here, is crafting stations. These are used to instantly whip up things in higher quality than normal uh, that you don't want to spend all the time on. So what I'm going to do right now is buy the tannery and show you how this works. So, let's pull up the tannery. It shows you that you can place and use to cure leather and hide items. And it lists in here what you can get. So you can get the basics of hide, a hide sleeping bag, and then a number of saddles. Pretty much every saddle you can get in here. Really nice hide shirt, pants. Now with all this stuff, those cost 10, 10, 15, 5, 5. I could use it on that. I'm not going to. I need this for saddles. What I'm going to do is look through the saddles here. You can see some of these are really expensive. The beaver saddle, sixteen fifty. That's I'd have to buy three of these things worth. That's a lot of amber. It's probably about I'm gonna say three dollars worth of amber right there just to get the beaver saddle if you wanted it. Um, Rex saddle, Quet saddle down here. You can actually buy Spino saddles, Moses sore saddles, and Tuso saddles. Now, if you're on PVE, you can also buy platform saddles, but you can't buy those on here except for. Can you buy the Parasur platform? No. You used to be able to buy the Parasur platform. They patched that out. I think they realized how overpowered it was. Now, when using these, it's important to remember, A, when you're buying more cures, if you run out, the more you buy, the more you save. So, obviously, buying 7,500 for 350 is way better than buying 500 for 40. Second thing to remember is, item values change every time you pick this up and drop it down. For example, look at this. The value of this Journeyman Hide shirt is 85 armor, 215 durability. I hit pick up, place, 78 armor, 148 durability. So if you're buying anything in this, especially saddles, make sure you're getting good quality because sometimes they're a dud, sometimes they're not. Right now I'm looking for an Argentavis saddle. This is 73. I'm going to pick this up a few more times, get an idea of what range I should see from an Argentavis saddle. And I will get back to you when I've got a good one.
Alright, so here we go. I've picked this up and dropped it maybe 20 times. I've got an 83 here. That's almost the highest one I've seen. The highest one I saw was an 87, and that was the second time I picked it up. So, I got a lot of variants. I got as low as 30, and as high as 87. So, don't just throw one of these down and buy the first saddle you see. You are wasting your cures, and you're wasting your amber. Don't do that. Save it. Check it. Pick it up. Put it down. Spend the time, and save yourself a lot of heartache, because we're talking about... 53 armor that I could have been missing if I'd gotten the smaller one. So, cost the exact same. Alright, we're going to go find our Argentavis, and I will get right back to you. And we found and saddled the Argentavis. So, he's looking great. He's now level 53. Got some pretty decent stats. And he killed somebody. <laughs> he killed, he killed a Bob. Oh my goodness. Okay, that's just funny. He killed a bob with no stuff. I didn't even see that in Triblog. That is hilarious. Speaking of Triblog, by the way, if y'all were looking at my tames list and seeing Tamed by Snickers, Tamed by Trippy, I regularly change my tribe name. It's just part of having these little bases that nobody will think to associate with one another. I don't want people seeing all my little shacks and saying, oh, they all belong to one guy. I want every time they see it for it to have a different name so they don't see a trend. So yeah, I change my name all the time. I'm not getting outside help. This is a solo series. I really want, by the end of this, to be able to turn to you and see and say, look guys, it's possible. You can solo nomad mad and never get wiped. Um, we'll see if that happens. I'd love for that to happen. But this is just me. So I'm going to take this guy. I'm going to go get our Dodigris. And we're going to place beds really quickly for y'all. Okay, guys, I'm out placing beds. And I just had to stop to look at this. I just got to show you just starkly the difference between what I'm doing and what 99% of everyone else is doing and what they're doing makes no sense. Think about it. Look at this. This guy has built a wooden 2x2 two two and surrounded with it with spikes. Now he's probably a noob. I get that. But think about it. Everybody's so busy building these 2x2s, two even out of metal, even with turrets, trying to reinforce them. And people are going to smash them up. People are going to smash them up in a couple days. I've been on here almost two weeks and I haven't had a single structure destroyed. And I'm building on the edges of the Alpha Mountains. There's a massive tribe up on there. Someone owns Obsidian. I've been building all around them. Someone owns a Volcano. I'm building all around them and I'm not getting smashed. Why? Because they don't have time for a 2x2 two two or a 1x1 one one that's open and already destroyed. You build something like this, you're protecting something. It's obvious you're protecting someone. Something. Don't do this, guys. Don't do this. Don't think traditionally. Don't let yourself be pigeonholed into the little base mindset where you have to stay alive and survive with all your stuff in a place where you can log off safely. Don't log off safely. Die. It's a good practice anyway. If you're in an alpha tribe with a huge base, die when you log off. You will save yourself the heartache of that one time you get caged. Just trust me, don't do this. Think about what you do, think about how you play, think about the psychology of it. It might seem and it might feel unsafe to do what I'm doing and have open bases and have little boxes hidden in floors here and there. But it's what works. Just think about it. Alright, we've been flying around laying down beds. And I found this base here, raided, blown open. Some of the doors left open, which indicates foul play to me, but you never know. Never know, never know. So what I'm going to do is try to take advantage of this and pretend my foundation is theirs. If it will let me. Yes, it will. Okay, so what we're going to do is start here. Nice and flush with it. So, hopefully this works. I'm honestly beginning to doubt whether or not they've changed the mechanics because I can't get any foundations to drop now. This was working three days ago, but since two days ago, it won't work. So it's kind of frustrating me a bit, but uh, I'll get in Discord and I'll ask them tomorrow. Find out if maybe they've changed any of the building mechanics. They have before to try to solve some raft issues that were going on. They changed some 
mechanics and they're they just took out floating towers, so maybe part of floating towers was not allowing foundations to go forward, who knows. But, their purview, their game, I can work with it either way. So, let's keep going here. There we go. Drop that. Come on. Drop, drop. There we go. Pull this out. that thatch right there, pull that out, moment of truth, no it's not going to drop lower, but it will here, heck with it I'm doing it, okay. I've had so many failed attempts the last couple of days on this. I can't complain. The only issue is going to be getting the full height over to that. We need a few more thatch foundations. How many do I have? One. That's not going to be quite enough. That's okay. I can look another one up right now. So, you're just using the max height foundations to add a snap point. And we throw that in bed. That. That's a hair better. Okay, that's what it's supposed to look like, guys. It's supposed to get this little tiny thing sticking out here. But if they weren't looking closely, they might not know what it is. And I'm going to transfer these and these. So we're going to swap out one, two, seamless, nobody would know. And we're going to throw one, two, three, four, like that. There we go, blown out wall, not blown out wall. It's part of their base. So now I just need to whip up a couple forges, throw them on top of there, and that is a wrap. All right guys, so we got some more forges. I'm just gonna throw them down like this. Right here. And right here. And let me reposition that just a hair. There we go. And for some color and a hair bit of utility if I'm at the area. Throw that down there. Now, again, this guy's left all his doors unlocked, which leaves me the perfect opportunity to continue the trend. Now, if he comes back, which I highly doubt he will, he left all his doors unlocked, there is even a slight possibility he won't notice. But he probably will. Raider comes in. I don't know. I wouldn't know. Look at that, that's seamless. There's the little telltale sign of the double foundation, there's double lines there, but other than that, this is great. So I've got six days to utilize this guy's base. Little did he know when he got raided and all his hopes were destroyed and smashed, he was actually providing new life for somebody else. So that leaves us with five beds now. We've grown by two. I might hit up one more before logging off, but I've been having real problems. I found out the mechanic does work where you drop the foundations here, but I've been having real problems getting it to work anywhere that's not absolutely perfect. I was literally on a completely flat stone plateau early and it wouldn't work. So I don't know what's up with that. But I'm going to keep fiddling around with that over the next few days, getting more bases in. I was hoping to put in three tonight, only managed two because I had to use extra resources to work something out. 
Kind of get this looking pretty. So I hope you all enjoyed the content. Um, hope you all are okay with me using crafting stations. And I hope you PC and console users are going to enjoy as I cover some of the mobile differences. Hope that doesn't bore people too much. Next episode, we're likely going to do some caving, and get ourselves some blueprints, and start establishing more caches. Beds are great, but you need caches to survive. So, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.